Oh my <laughs> fucking god! Like, what the? F- what are we even doing? What's? <laughs> we lost a couple years. Yeah, uh, we. It's the first. It's the first um, video episode. You're you're here. I'm here. You're here. I'm here. Like we did it. We did it. It's the blanket <laughs> fort. Like we just spent the last two hours probably trying to figure out what was going on with this camera in here because the camera had like the display information at the bottom of it. And I was like, what the fuck? And then it also had black bars on the sides of it. So we were trying to make it widescreen, trying to get the display information, right? It was a whole fucking ordeal that I really don't care to ever repeat. (laughs) Um, As we were trying to head into like a pretty Zen conversation, like a really peaceful conversation. Always, always. Yeah. But instead the universe was like, nah, no, we're going to we're going to make it really stressful. Make it really Why does tech have to be like that? Why does tech have to be so hard every time? Why can't I paid for it to work? <laughs> That's what I bought. Right. But this is to bring it back into the zen. Like mm-hmm. I said, tech is only binary. So it either works or it doesn't work. There's no medium working. I didn't pay for maybe though. You know, I didn't, pay, I didn't... you don't pay for maybe. You pay for yes. <laughs> Pay for yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's open our, our um fake beers. Oh my god, I love this so much. Cheers across the room. Cheers these. Mm-hmm. I feel like I Cheer. looked like I've never opened a can before. <laughs> that I was like that, that I'm like Donald Trump <laughs> drinking like this. <laughs> it's yeah, right it's, it's like when you have to do something in a play and you're like, wait, how do I like how do people walk you're like wait sit in a chair done it a million times and you fall all over isn't that so weird i watch all the time when i watch um young actors in plays like like uh student actors mm-hmm. they all it, there's always stuff like that where they're like i just have to sit down <laughs> here normally like a person sits uh-huh. down and you're like did how did you forget <laughs> how did you forget how to sit you're just my sitting favorite. it's my favorite <laughs> left foot right foot left foot right foot <laughs> my favorite yeah we both just went to open our beers and we were like <laughs> of course <laughs> like all, all of a sudden i had like rick and mortis i didn't know what i was doing <laughs> um anyway uh cheers we're in the blanket fort you're the first in-person guest back in the studio it feels so good to have a living breathing person sitting across from me it's good dynamics um you were here. You're one of, I mean, maybe like what, like episode seven, episode eight? Like oh, you yeah, were like I'm... early on. This is episode 127. Jeez. Yeah. Um, and you were here early on when literally we were sitting across from each other, very close with like a divider up. I I have this room divider mm-hmm. and like an air mattress, and I put a blanket over that, and we sat across from each other, <laughs> like sweating, talking into it was uh, hot. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember I was wearing like a light blue shirt and I was like, well, that was a bad move because I legitimately looked like I got out of a pool afterwards. <laughs> you know, when you get those old man sweats, you're like, why am I sweating so much more? What's happening to me and my glands? I can't promise you that you're going to sweat less this time. <laughs> and and this time we've got you cool on camera. So tight. <laughs> Super good. Um. You know, like in the fall and winter, it'll get a little bit cooler in here. And it's later. Part of the benefit of us struggling so hard to get the tech stuff up mm. is that it's a little less hot outside now. Yeah. So, and we had a little bit longer in the space to have the AC on. So I think we should be okay. But um, yeah, welcome back, Wit. It's, Thanks, I, buddy. I love you. It's good to see you. I love you too. I'm nervous for this one. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about doing this for a minute. Oh, at least a year. Yeah. At least a year. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, and I know, and I always knew it would happen, but I like, I knew it was going to happen when the universe was like, now I'm going to really, really get you. Yeah. Yeah. And like, ev- yes, very thematic. Very good. That was a really good growl that you just did. And you're like, no, that's a really good oh, like, it's, it's like, um, I'm Bateman. That's my, that's my Will Arnett. Hey, uh, Bateman. Bateman over here is like uh <laughs> that's Beetlejuice. Oh, <laughs> am I am I Michael Keaton? 
Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm trying to do a Will Arnett, but I'm actually, hey, Beetlejuice, don't say my name three times. <laughs> That's what he says through the whole movie. <laughs> don't say my name three times or I'm going to show up and turn into a snake. <laughs> my favorite is when people do impressions. This is my favorite, one of my favorite things of all time. When people do impressions, but the only thing that they say when they do the impression is, hey, I'm, and then they say the person's name. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> Be like, I got an impression. It's of Bob Dole. And they go like this. Hey, I'm Bob Dole. <laughs> also, I dated myself so hard by saying Bob Dole. <laughs> like half of your audience is like, is he 80? Bob Dole. Uh, this is a really good impression of Bob Dole. Who is me? I'm Bob Dole. Hi, I'm Bob Dole. <laughs> I used to have this bit that I would do on stage when I was uh, pretending to be a stand-up comic in New York where I would do really good impressions of people you've never met. And I would do, <laughs> I would do like my friends. I'd be like, oh, this is my friend, you know, like, and you know, Chris, I'd be like, this is my friend, Chris, uh, <laughs> ordering a pizza. And I'd be like, oh, I don't know about that. Perfect. I definitely want pineapple. Oh, it's actually <laughs> perfect. We love you, Chris. That's perfect. And then I'd tell people in the audience, like, just so you know, like, that's a lot like him. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what he's like. But then I'd go, okay, cool. Now I'll do some impressions of people you know. Mm. So I'd be like, um, the other day I was walking through Times Square and I bumped into Christopher Walken. <laughs> and like, everyone knows, like, oh, it's Christopher Walken. And they're like, and uh, I walked up to him and I was like, hey, you're Christopher Walken. And he didn't say anything, but like, you can imagine what it'd be like if you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good bit. That's a good bit. I really like that. Just like refusing to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I just walked up to uh, Chris Rock on the street. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, hey. <laughs> Great. Perfect. He was he was in a hurry. He couldn't stop and chat. But <laughs> I've all, I've never tried. I've tried so many things performance wise. I've never tried stand up. It really, really gives me those. Uh, Nervous poops. I can't. No way, Jose. I could never do it legit. I mean, I, I oh. did that show in November, that show in Vegas, and it scared the shit out of me. Yeah. It was terrifying. And after that, I was like, yeah, I can't do that. Because I feel like I could probably get to the part of prepping and confidence. But if if I get there and it's the gauntlet and that truth serum does not give me what I want back, mm -hmm. I'm going to – I will unravel. I yeah. would for sure unravel. I do not think I would be brave. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> you mean like if if you bomb? Like yeah. If you, yeah. I'll just start crying. <laughs> I'll probably just start crying. <laughs> I'm like, you're right. You're right. <laughs> nope, that's the right response. I'm so sorry. I don't know why I thought I could do this. <laughs> what do I do to make it up? What do I, what do you need? I was so right to be this nervous. <laughs> It's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're nervous doing this episode. It's been mm. a long time coming. I wanted you back in person here. I wanted it to happen <sighs> this way. I thought I was going to have the, the in-home studio set up sooner. You know, I thought a lot of things. I thought that COVID wasn't going to last <laughs> as long as it has. I thought that we'd be back to doing in-person interviews faster. I thought I was going to have the home studio in a place where I wanted it sooner i thought i was gonna have two cameras but like we finally got i got i got both microphones i got both cameras i got that sign behind you that um haven't figured out how to light it yet so i can turn it on let's just look at it really quick yeah, just give so it a that, blinky just so that people can see boom 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 that's what it does yeah it's sexy but it's sort of blinking it's sort of going like let's look at some of the modes maybe should i just ha should we just embrace it and just have that behind you the whole time no, because I think that that's a thing with like epilepsy. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so I, sh I should figure out how to stop this now. <laughs> and also, if anybody was pregnant that just watched that video, that they're now not pregnant. That's what that does. That's what happens. That's what happens. <laughs> can't go on that ride. Uh, yeah. So we're going to figure out how to light that so that it can be on and have a cool ambiance. But like, I'm feeling good about the vibe in it's here. Vibe. It's a great vibe. And Temperature's I great. And it took us a while to get the cameras going, but I'm feeling good now. Like we're here mm -hmm. and uh, you and I have been friends. We've been on a friendship ride for a while. So I want to, we're talking about forgiveness and I think we can start in a space of like what it takes and to forgive someone close to you and to forgive a friend or forgive a family member or something like that. Mm. And then we'll move into like, you know, things like forgiving yourself and self forgiveness and what's important about that. Exactly. Um, but you know, uh, 
you and I in our friendship because we're both people who require a I lot like of watching you search for these words. <laughs> <laughs> we we require a lot of forgiveness yeah. from the people in our lives and from ourselves. Um, we find ourselves regularly in situations, people who have who require a lot of forgiveness. It's also required of us to figure out how to forgive too. Because if you're constantly, mm -hmm. if you're a person who's constantly requiring forgiveness from other people and constantly requiring other people to offer you their grace, uh, you also need to be good about um figuring out how to offer sufficient forgiveness yeah. and sufficient grace. Yeah. You know? Uh are we gonna get into like, like our beef, like specifically, or are we just gonna talk about the fact that like we've beefed in general? Give the people what they want, man. Let's get gritty. <laughs> Let's, Let's get them, gritty. Give them the details, the give deets, them... and the drama. I mean, yeah, this is your show. You can edit however you want, but let's do it. You only live once. Yolo. I wasn't on you for that whole thing. I was just <laughs> reacting to you that whole time you were talking. So now I'm giving you the reaction shot while I'm talking. Cool. Great. This is also my first time operating the switcher. <laughs> and I'm like, Fired. I'm trying to be good about that. So far, I think I've been doing a pretty good job. I, I have think no it's pretty, idea. You'll see it later. Like you'll watch it on YouTube and see how I did. <laughs> what if it's just you? The and then time. and then and then there's momentary moments where it's like beep beep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> the whole time I've been pressing the wrong button for your camera. So it just I actually did early. You'll see this early in the in the stream. I pushed three and it went to black for like three seconds. Cool. So it happened for like three seconds. And I looked, I saw in the screen that it was black. And I was like, I was like, oh no, it can't oh, be no. like that. Oh, no. Um, and so I now I just have my thumb toggling between one and two. And so I'm just going back and forth. Seamless. Couldn't even see the audience. The idea is that they're not gonna know. It's gonna feel like I've got an audio engineer in here or someone who's operating that. Yeah. And oh, it's, it's in your lap. lap. It's sitting in my lap. I thought you were masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous about this episode. I just thought I would kind of You're like this is what I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In moments of of nervousness. I do a That's little funny. sneaky rub. <laughs> I, do, I do a little sneaky rub. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think we can get into every beef you and I have ever had. No, we don't have three hours. <laughs> the last one was... The funny thing about it is I think that it was... Uh, I mean, it like most things, if you... Do you, do you remember what it was? Do you, I'm not charting what the last one... No, go ahead. Keep going. I mean, I'm sure you're right. I just can't place it. Um, the last one I remember is mm. uh, I was heading to Utah for the holidays. Oh, fuck. Yes, and can't remember that. Yeah, okay. Um, and <laughs> you had asked, you said, hey, are you going? Because we both have family in Utah. And you said, hey, are you going to Utah for the holidays? And I said, yes, I am. He said, if, if I... If you're going, can I catch a ride with you? Mm. And I said, yeah, absolutely. And I, but I let you know, I, 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 at least I think I did my, in my, this is from my perspective of it is I thought I said, yeah, like, I don't know what, when I'm leaving yet, because <laughs> I might have something that I have to shoot there or sure. like, there might be something I have to be there for, but like, I'll let you know what the schedule is and you can come with us if it works for you. Right. Anyway, it came up. I, I was going to be there early shooting something. I can't remember what, but I was like, Hey, I'm leaving on this date and I'm going to be there till this day. And I was going to be there for like 12 days or something. And, and I think for uh, the, for, for you, you were like, Oh, that doesn't really work for me. That's a longer window than I was hoping to do. Correct. Or something That's like that. Exactly what happened. Yeah. And I, and, and that was what caused the friction was I was like, Oh, well, I don't, I mean, that's when I'm going. And you, you were kind of like, Oh, well, I wish you would have considered that. I think I just was like, it's Christmas. You go for the Christmas week. Yeah. And then I was confused because that's not what you had scheduled. <laughs> and I think more than anything, what I did, and this is this is pinpointing how these things go awry, is that I wasn't taking facts and I wasn't taking your side of the story. I was literally writing an emotional wave. Uh -huh. And I was like, how do I feel? What does this do for me? And I was in a whole place of selfishness, which I tried to be quiet about, but clearly it was like, I was not communicating that that's all good. Like, you know me too well that even in text, if I'm like, okay, <laughs> then you're like, you bitch. Right, right. Uh-huh. And that's probably, I think that that was what was happening. I was also working like a PA gig, which 
<clears throat> like real people jobs in general, I'm not good at. And so I was stressed out about that. And, and I was also, I think, kind of fielding texts from, from a person I was dating that was very, very needy. And <laughs> well, I think that this has been a theme in both of our stories of part of the reason why we wind up requiring grace and forgiveness from people is historically we we don't always have the best ability to move through our our initial emotional response to something right we have an emotional response and it's colored by any number of things we're in a stressful situation in our work life or in our uh personal life with our relationships or a combination of the two and someone says something or does something that rubs us the wrong way or that makes us feel some kind of way usually i mean and what this is like what i'm learning in therapy and shit like this is like it might what it what it actually is is it's fear Mm -hmm. So anger that I have when I lash out at someone, anger and resentment, it's a secondary emotion. It's a, a it it's what my fear converts into. So something okay. that someone is saying or doing is making me feel fear in some way. It's making me feel insecure or making me feel uh, not taken care of or like the, 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 the thing that I needed to do is not going to happen now because this person's fucking it up. That's making me feel fear. And my fear that fear always makes me feel insecure and the way that i behave in that space sometimes is i lash out and yeah. i and so like my inability to take stock of and take inventory of my emotional state and my initial emotional response and my inability to have a pause after that initial emotional response often leads me to like snap at people or say something that later i wish i could go whoops that was too hot or or even just later i wish i i just wish I had not said that. Thing. Well, we also, I think we also share this thing where, and I certainly did this much more, but like on full blast level 10, a lot was we dig our heels in. So mm -hmm. like if we have an assertion and it, it feels like that works for me and I need to move on with my life or this conversation or this day, whatever, <clears throat> that we're like incapable of like pulling our heels out. And, and, and we're not that we're incapable, but, th but that's what gets us stuck. I think a lot of the time. And so as simple as, as just going like, yeah, just like, okay, let me, let me hear what's happening. Let me, I mean, today I had a thing where I, I had a situation with a person where I could have fought back. I could have been defensive. I could have like pled my case. It just wasn't worth it. Mm -hmm. What was really much more worth it was the forgiveness, was the recovery. And so what that required out of me, I think, and, and, and it was a success, was to just listen harder and to um, try so hard to be in that other person's shoes. I think it's so hard to like stop, press pause, and go, but how are they looking at it? Because like normally, who fucking cares? We're selfish beasts. So we're like, I don't care. I don't... It's cool. It's not yeah. about them. It's about right. me. And <clears throat> that has been like a saving thing for me to just simply make those little changes and ask questions. That's another huge one with forgiveness and arguments or whatever is to like ask questions. Because usually more information is going to give you more context and it's going to give you a clearer picture. And things that you made quick assumption assumptions towards are obliterated yeah and the situations where uh that are really hard to to get out of where there's a lot of digging in of heels like you said mm. um sometimes things things that make it hard to undig heels is like when i've already said too much too quick before i could get <laughs> to the place of asking questions and being curious and saying hold on what happened here and having that pause i've already shot my mouth off i've mm. already said too much mm. and now it's like even if I want to be curious and go help me understand here, we're already doing that portion from a place of being like, you just said some shit that like, I'll, I'll try to answer your questions and help you out. But like, understand yeah. it's hot over here. Like yeah. I'm not cool right now because of what you just said and, and the shit you already said. So like, I'll try to help help you out here, but also like, after the after we're still going to need some space right. at some point with this and so there's that and also i think ah oh, no oh no what did i do i pushed a, i pushed a button that i shouldn't push on the switcher 
It was blinking red. I thought there was going to be a Did bomb. Did you see that? Yeah, was yep. there a bomb? Uh, it almost exploded. That was the explode button. And don't push that. Please don't push that. They shouldn't have it. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Is like... So unnecessary. It's so unnecessary, but like in certain cases with like certain movies, they've needed to like quickly explode their equipment. Just explode everything. Yeah. yeah. I get and it. I get so it it's on there. Like that's why it's there was like a union thing where they didn't have an explode button on some of the equipment. I heard about that. And like some guy was like, I needed this to blow up. <laughs> and he was like, Where's my explosion button? Yeah. And it like, and like fucked oh, up. you have an old model. It fucked up like a $20 million <laughs> shot. And so now all the models have explosion buttons. Thank God. God. Thank God. <laughs> We're so stupid. I love our run. We're I so love stupid. it. Um, I'm going to get like, I think for God, first time handling this thing, I'm going to figure it out. But um, what you I was should have say, it with Google glass and like blink for your yeah, different switches. That's easier. <laughs> it won't look weird at <laughs> all. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Google glass. Is that a thing? Does that still exist? Do people still have computer glasses? Um, who just released one? I was at um, VidCon and uh, fucking um, Ray-Ban uh, has a, a, they did like a partnership with like Apple, I think. And they've got like a really cool pair that I got to try on that are like dope. That, is that like, commercial with uh, like a Tom Cruise impersonator and it's risky business? Oh, yeah. That's what it should be. Call me. Yeah. <laughs> ideas <laughs> yeah um what i was gonna say also about digging in heels is like there's also this thing that i have that um you might have this too but and it's a it's, it's a problem and it's a thing that i have Don't to work on what I which I, i'm saying you might uh which is uh i need to be right yeah i gotta be right you know and so especially in that situation that you and i experienced i felt really right and there's nothing more <laughs> dangerous for me in a situation where like I'm about to have like a problem with someone than when I feel like I'm right. Well, we also Austin to our credit, I don't think either of us want, we're not cruel people, but if we have something that kind of registers funky with us, what we will do normally is we'll sit on it for a little bit, but it just starts boiling and boiling and boiling and sooner or later that explodes explosion button mm -hmm. and um that's why that's there <laughs> right so I, you know i think again it's like in situations where i remember i was i was dating this one person who ended up becoming a wife and uh i like early on we were dating and we had just a little hiccup or whatever and we were in our in my car and I said something kind of flippant, not necessarily, you know, outrageous, but it was flippant and it was like stupid. And she immediately, within like three seconds, she took, I, I can like vividly remember this. She took a breath and then she went, wait, I don't like that you said that. And it was, and I just went, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I should not have said that. And again, the second part of that, of, <laughs> whatever apology 101 is like not only recognizing it but letting the apology end without trying to defend yourself mm -hmm. that works wonders because you at the end of the day it doesn't fucking matter it doesn't fucking matter if if it's just going to keep going and be cyclical and be in a pattern to to plead your case because again right you're trying to be right well, I mean, <clears throat> this is why I think that 12-step uh, programs can be good for so many more people than just addicts and stuff, because I think like people need to be taught how to properly apologize and how to like, like what that actually looks like. And it's been such a revelation for me to realize that like, there's so much more power in telling someone very clearly that you are aware of where the harm was done. You are aware mm -hmm. of how you did harm and what mm -hmm. you did to do harm and then not qualifying it in any way no ifs ands or no but like here look i'm aware that i did this this and this but you have to acknowledge that you kind of did fucking egg me on goes nowhere no, nowhere and that is not an actual apology and we like it's a it's a really hard thing for a lot of people to do because they're like even even if they're being really clear about what they did wrong even if they're like I, I said this, 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 and this, shouldn't have said those things. I acted from a place of insecurity and fear, and I own all of that. But I yeah. got to hear from you that you that you know that you also 
did this that triggered me. You know, like we get oh, some oh. sick satisfaction from hearing hearing them feel shame, guilt, right? Acknowledgement, right? We get really we get really off on being like, do you feel bad for that thing that you did? Yeah, like if I, hey, I'm I'm owning what I did. Mm. I just need to hear you say that you're aware that you were all And then we're good. And uh, then we're all good. Yeah, and then and then it's forgiven. Uh -huh. Then it's forgiven. Mm -hmm. So like conditional forgiveness, conditional apologies, things like that. And that's something that in AA they really harp on where it's like, no, when you go around making your amends, you are not explaining to people like why like even when I say stuff like like tell someone like I was really sick then I mm. was like I was not doing well and I was really in my sickness and really in like my alcoholism I'm not offering an excuse I'm not telling them and I even it's very clear in the process it's like this is not an excuse for my behavior I'm just right. letting you know where I was yeah. and like what that was coming from and that it's not about you like you didn't you didn't do anything to deserve that it was all me I was really in like I was in an unhealthy place and I was really like you know, really owning it and taking yeah. accountability for it, even in situations where like, so like before you do an amends process, you go through all of your inventory with people where like, you'll break down your, the resentments that you have toward people. And usually in the root of it, there's always something that you are, you are responsible for too. And a big part of that is like releasing those people of whatever it is that they did to contribute to that situation okay. because you don't control other people and, and their actions and their behavior. So oftentimes I would be making an amends to someone that was about something where like in the back of my head somewhere, I know that I'm like, well, I know that we each played a part mm -hmm. in this thing, mm -hmm. but my job in this situation is not to take your inventory. My job is not to list out what we both did my job is to be responsible for my behavior yeah just and, yourself and that's it and, yeah and you you experienced this today a little bit with what you were telling me about that like the experience of it's it, it, it like when you take that pause mm. and and don't act out of the first emotional impulse or 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 feeling you allow the other person to also have that same pause. They can mirror that back to you. And it's the same thing with a true apology where you're like, I'm just going to own what I did and be really clear about that and not qualify it. Oftentimes what you see is you get that back from the other person. They'll go, oh, thank you so much. That's so lovely to hear. Also, I just want to say like, you know that I wasn't perfect in that situation either. And happens all the time. Yeah. Not, not that that's necessary. Not that that's required. No. And we really shouldn't have that requirement that like, well, I'm going to say this, but they better fucking say it back. It's like, no, I'm offering this. Like I'm offering this free of charge. I'm you got to, you got to love with no expectation that it's going to be returned. And likewise, you got to forgive with no expectation that it's going to be accepted. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and that's, that's a whole difficult part of this, but I think a big part of, forgiveness is learning how to make amends and how to like clearly apologize. Cause a lot of people don't fucking full on adults don't know how to do that. No. And also because their um, vulnerability comes into play and if people are not comfortable being vulnerable, then it's just going to be so much easier to just like write them off, ghost them, not talk to them or what is really probably the most insidious and poisonous thing um, is that if we don't take this moment as as quickly as you can process it through and and take onus, take accountability, take inventory, let the other person say what they have to say, ask follow-ups. It's like all of this like constructional stuff that um, you will start to embed and cement a narrative that then becomes the thing where you're then the victim. And that's a part of forgiveness for me where forgiveness and victimhood kind of swim in the same patterns. And I have to choose forgiveness over victimhood because it's really easy to be the bereaved and the one that is carrying the scars. Um, yeah, and when yeah. you tell that story to other people that have no idea about it, weren't there, are going to just probably side with you because they care about you it gives you this relief but it's not getting to the heart of the matter and so then you just start to really bake that in 
And I feel like if you do that too often, if that becomes um, a pattern and habitual, that it it it's it just gets harder and harder to break out of that because it's so justifying. Because running away, not trying to communicate with the person can feel good if you can just move on, right? And so people will go like, um, they, they will choose that. They will choose, you know, that's the flight element of it, where if they they fight or they flight or or they flee, um, that's, that's that element. And I just try really hard. I hate, um, I hate losing people, you know, and mm -hmm. I told you that today, uh, loss for me is a thing that like, I still struggle with because I'm perpetually five years old and in trouble. Yeah. Like my, my PTSD is that like, if somebody is upset with me, that's the worst feeling mm -hmm. because I feel like I don't know how to make it better mm -hmm. as fast as I want it to. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a big thing that I, that I deal with that I have to like constantly fine tune. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's important. So, <clears throat> you know, in our story that we were telling, mm. obviously we've gotten to a place of reconciliation. Uh, it didn't happen right away. No, no, it, no. We took time off. No. Yeah. Like the biggest time we ever have. Yeah. yeah. I did not like it. Yeah. Need, <laughs> took a break. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay. We're back. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I think, um, uh, <clears throat> Oh God, you were saying something in there about um <laughs> about forgiveness, the thing that we're talking about. There was a part in there that I latched onto that I'm that I I'm forgetting now. Um it'll come back. It'll come back. It'll come back. Yeah, it's fine. We can move on for now. <laughs> uh I wanted to talk a little bit about um, you know, okay, you talked about losing people. You don't like losing people. Well, you were talking about our story in that in that example. Is that what you were trying to remember? Yeah, it, but it, it, the, our, our story was part of the next thing I wanted to talk about, but then you okay. said something that I was like, oh, that's good. I want to mm. uh, mm. talk about that. Oh, I remember what, what it was now. <laughs> um, uh, you were talking about... Um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's engaging. Uh, yeah, I've lost it. Um, <laughs> but it's like it's like there. It's in the tip of my brain. Just keep talking. I'm gonna hit the explode button. Let's just start <laughs> over. <laughs> that's when it's needed. Ejector seat. That's what it's for. Whoa! <laughs> uh, that's the end of the show. <laughs> That'd be really um, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, in our story, like you talked about fear of losing people and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. and um, I think there's some people that this is a difficult topic topic with because they have people in their lives who have done such egregious harms to them and wrongs to them that they they can they don't like they can't imagine moving mm. on moving on from that or let or like forgiving that person um you know really really serious wrongs that were done to them uh and this is this is kind of this is what I was going to say you talked about this people who like hanging on to that feeling of like the victimhood that this is what it was. <laughs> yep. There you go. Found it. <laughs> um, that uh, forgiveness and victimhood swim in the same circles. You said uh -huh. uh, that there, you can really define yourself by like the wrongs that were done to you. And this is something that you and I have talked about how like it can be sort of a red flag in the dating world when someone, whenever you ask them about like their previous relationships, when all they have to say is just like bad stuff, like, Oh no, every, he, he was awful. He totally. was uh, toxic. He was an abuser. Not that that's not legitimate. Not that people don't actually go through that. Not to delegitimize the experience of someone being like, I really was in a relationship with a bad person. But that the fact that that person is define is choosing in their life to define the story of what's happened to them through a lens of wrong was done to me. Well, and it feels that's a little, a little, feels a little manipulative, <clears throat> right? In a way, maybe subconsciously. That the, the what they're doing, what they're presenting to you is is manipulative because they want to get your validation. Well, yeah, and I I mean, I have no way of knowing what actually happened inside sure. that relationship. And that I don't really think that I want to I, this is tricky territory because it could sound like I'm saying like 
you know, they're a bunch of fucking liars, you know, like they're just lying women who like, that's not what I'm talking about. No, 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 no. I'm talking, no, no. Yeah. I'm talking specifically about people who have chosen that the story that they're going to lead with when they're introducing themselves and describing themselves in their history with relationships is that they have been a victim, which to me, there's an undertone in that, which means you haven't done the work to let go mm -hmm. and to forgive mm -hmm. whatever it was that ha happened in that situation. It's still hot in your, it's still in there and it's still defining you, the wrongs that were done to you. And it's that whole thing. It's that old adage about resentment where it's like resentment is like drinking poison and wanting the other person to die. Like it's inside you. It's not actually doing anything to that other person. I've been in relationships with people where like they had problems that were, that were part of past relationships. And I'd be like, I'm not that person. So you, you have a problem in this relationship that's based on something that someone else did. And that person that you're mad at is out living their lives somewhere. Totally. And it's not me totally. and it's somebody else. And you're having your current life corroded and fucked up by the fact that you're still hung up on this resentment. And it's not to say that people don't have justified reasons to be upset or that they didn't actually have wrongs done to them. It's, it's to say that like forgiveness isn't just for the other person. If anything, it's more for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, uh, I'm trying to see how I get into this correctly i just took forever so take your time <laughs> no i i uh, for a very long time this is a, like a full admittance and it actually feels really good um for a very long time i would say the same stories about certain people that made who i was at that time and the struggles that I was going through, um, some people sympathetic towards me. And it wasn't until like 2017 um, where I took a real legitimate pause and break and recalibration and a spiritual journey and um, realized that that wasn't helping me progress to hold on to those stories to hold on those versions yeah and right. to not think of what it's like for these people um i think it's very easy to find out i've been married more than once um i love love but i also was young and raised religious so i got married young because that's what you do and then i <clears throat> just tried it a couple times <laughs> and and I was dumb you know I was really young and I was really um I didn't know who I was and I felt like because I didn't know are we okay shit the, see this is the problem is that it's gonna the, the the laptop's gonna die oh no no oh no fuck it's because I had to use the power cable oh to, no to we don't have another out oh my oh, god no. We're like right in the middle of it. Oh my God. Just one thing after the other way. It's because we were working so long to try to fix the issue that the power, the power drain because Happens. I'm, I'm to the audience. I'm using the power cable mm -hmm. to, for my controller, for the cameras, because the other cable I was using wasn't working. It was shorting out. And now I'm using the, the computer power cable, like the USB-C computer power, power cable to, to connect my controller to the computer, which means that the computer is left without power and it's going to die any second now. Oh my God. I can't believe this. So we can, we can pause. Yeah, let's pause. Okay. Okay. We're going to pause the broadcast and we're going to come back with more shortly.